Hey there, Postal here. Today we're going to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to start off taking a look at the stats of the XP54 Swoosh Goose, and then we're going to take a look at some gameplay. We just need to have a discussion about this plane. Alright, so in case you have, I don't know, been not playing the game recently or, you know, living under a rock, and hey, kudos to you if you found a way to live under a rock, it's probably a lot cheaper than rent. Um, the XP-54 Swoosh Goose Tier 6 American Heavy Fighter has been completely jacking up um, any game that it's in. I won't say that it's been completely messing up the um, matchmaker hasn't been messing up the overall gameplay um, just because honestly I haven't seen a whole lot of them out there um, probably well <laughs> every other game maybe 40 percent of the games have uh, in tier 6 have a swoosh goose and that being said um, not all of the games that have you know uh, an XP 54 in it have that XP 54 pulling off 10,000 plus personal points but the vast majority of them do and uh, the, the issue with the plane is just the way that it is balanced this plane is completely unbalanced its weakness is its survivability and we're gonna go over that in just a second but that's really its one weakness it's, it's honestly its one weakness the, the way to survive in the XP-54 is be the, be the aggressor. Um, be the smart aggressor, though. You don't want to get yourself stuck into a situation where, yeah, you might have killed, you might get it, be the aggressor and attack and kill somebody, but you got a bunch of people behind you now suddenly, or you're getting attacked from the side, whatever it may be. If you're the one initiating the contact in a one-on-one -on -one engagement, you're definitely going to win. There's just no way for you to really lose because you're going to come. Everything about the plane is built for that kind of engagement. So let's go over the details here. So I have the four um, standard tech tree heavy fighters here ready to go, ready to look at. Now keep in mind, each one of these that we're looking at is specialized. Because I've posted uh, uh, lengthy videos on how I think the tier, um, the tier six tech tree heavy fighters are all excellent. From this mosquito that nobody really seems to like, but I think it's vastly underappreciated. To the key 102, which is probably the uh, before the XP 54 came out, probably the strongest um, or dual strongest tier 6 heavy fighter. The Key 102 and the ME 410 were really, and on the NA server, really the two heavy fighters that you'd see most often. The ones that the um, you see doing the, the most damage, doing getting the most personal points, things of that nature. Personally, for me, um, I actually thought the P38J was just the most well-balanced of all these, because it had great airspeed, excellent altitude performance, good combination of guns, um, and you had the bombs and rockets, so you could, you know, utilize those if you really need to flip a sector. The um, the comparison with the XP-54, the XP-54 has no bombs, no rockets. None at all. Which, every single plane here has some sort of bombs and rockets. And I think that's what's causing the, um, the imbalance. So Wargaming, I'm assuming, says, okay, this plane doesn't have any bombs and rockets. So let's take that those um, that impact that bombs and rockets can have, and let's put it into other things of the plane. The problem with that mentality is, on something like an ME four ten, you're very rarely using the air to ground rockets. On something like Key one hundred two, the bombs are so weak that they're really not leveraged. They're kind of there for like, oh, you know, I guess I'll toss them down. Um, situation. Things on the Mosquito and the P-38, you've got a ton of bombs and rockets, and they're very, very useful, especially on the Mosquito because the reload time is so quick. So I think that's what, what the situation is. They took the metrics that they would have put towards bombs and rockets, 
and put it towards the other things that we're going to go over here. Let's just start off right off the bat here. We're not going to talk about the guns, but we will get to that. The airspeed. Now keep in mind, again, specialized, 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 specialized. Airspeed on the XP-54, already stock, just as fast as a P-38J. All right. A specialized P-38J. Granted, it's not fully maxed out equipment, but still, you get the uh, you, you get the understanding, right? Okay. Well, so if it's got such, such great airspeed, well, then the maneuverability must suck. Oh, it's barely less than a specialized Key 102. Hmm. Well, that's kind of odd. Well, then it must be, what, really low altitude? Oh. No, it's barely less than a P-38J. Okay. So you're second place in every single metric that's here. Well, then the guns must really suck, right? So if you're going to be fast and you're going to be maneuverable and you're going to have good altitude performance, well, your guns can't be, like, ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they can be. These guns are just, they're honestly, just stupid. Um, the 237mm cannons, that's fine. Put 237mm cannons on here. The issue that you're going to run into is they just don't overheat. Um, you know, uh, in live stream showed that it was, I don't even remember, 12 or 14 seconds, either way, really long time to be holding down the trigger on 37 millimeter cannons um, and not having them overheat. You have the second best gun armament, and again, this is not specialized, <laughs> of any of these planes. Better than a Key 102, which has a 57 millimeter cannon and those um, two 20 millimeter cannons. Your cumulative damage is about 50 more than that, right? Your cumulative damage is 20 more than your Mosquito, which has four freaking 20 millimeter cannons and four freaking machine guns. You're doing better than the P-38J, which kinda sorta has the same guns, but kinda doesn't, because when you're looking at these guns here, The difference is going to be in the um, in how long you can hold them down. A, the damage per second is less on the one cannon you get on the P-38J, and B, it overheats quicker than on the XP-54. Finally, you have the ME-410, which is one of the reasons everybody likes the ME-410. It just puts out so much damage. You've got the long-range 30mm cannons. But that's that's what we're comparing it to is an ME410. Uh, this this gun setup is completely different than all the rest. You've got the long um, the long range 30 millimeter cannons. That's all well and good. But you don't have the maneuverability. Vastly inferior maneuverability. And typically you'd use the ME410 to go faster and go higher to just get kind of get away and yet the XP-54 can go faster and go higher. So then let's take a look at the survivability. Well, just on the surface number, it's actually basically the same as everything else. I can tell you it's different, though, and it is definitely a weakness. If we're looking and we're comparing it to something like the Key 102, you've got the same same amount of hit points. You're going to have the same amount of hit points as the P-38J. Um, you're going to have less by 50 than the ME410 and the um, Mosquito. But it's 50 hit points. You're going so fast and able to maneuver as well as a lot of multi-rolls out there, uh, that 50 hit points isn't gonna make a huge difference to you. What is gonna make a difference is your resistance to damage. Now, I can tell you just on the, the stats numbers here, the 50 and 50 is deceiving. It's actually not that good. It's the one thing that, that quote-unquote balances the XP-54 is it cannot take a hit. This plane get this, gets this engine knocked out pretty darn often. It gets its wings and tail knocked out pretty often. And it doesn't have any real resistance to the damage. You're, when you get hit, you're, you're losing hit points. There's no, like, any kind of grace period, so to speak. This plane's airframe just cannot take hits, no matter what the metrics say. And, and the metrics actually make it look like it's, you know, on par with a Mosquito, on par, you know, with, with the P-38J, things of that nature. When in reality, it's the only thing balancing it is, you know, this resistance to damage feels like it's probably a 40. 
The resistance to fire, I guess, is a 50. I don't really don't really remember it catching on fire. I've only played it half a dozen times. And I've only had one bad game in it. And that's because I had to go up against two enemy specialized uh, XP-54s. And they were both really good. I've gone into games against um, specialized XP-54s and still come out on top because this plane's already strong right out of the gate, right? Just take off the frickin' uh, plastic wrap and you're already a really good plane. This plane is not balanced. Um, I don't typically, you know, call out that a plane needs to be nerfed, but this plane definitely needs to be nerfed. Um, I just haven't had, e again, even the, the game I lost, the one game I've lost in this, um, was not a bad game. Just unable to, you know, do anything against specialized version of this plane. If you're paying attention to the map, if you're paying attention to the enemies, you're going to do well in this plane. You're just keeping, you know, keeping a, a, your head on the swivel and paying attention to the, the game. You can keep pace if not outspeed all the other planes that are out there at this tier. You can outmaneuver or, or at least be the same maneuverability as every other heavy fighter and quite a bit of multi-rolls. You know the Key 102 can, can maneuver with quite a bit of multi-rolls and the XP-54 is the same maneuverability, right? So your altitude performance is ridiculous. There's just so many things going great for this airframe and that happens a lot with a lot of American um, planes. It's something, this is the reason I love the F-86 Sabre. It's the reason I love the F-2G. Um, you know, you've got really great airframes, but it's typically balanced by something. On the F-86, it's balanced by really weak guns. You know, on the F-2G, it's a multi-roll, so it's balanced by pretty mediocre airspeed and pretty mediocre altitude performance. This plane's not balanced. The guns just don't stop. They need to. That would be my, my, my balancing recommendation. I don't think it needs to be beat over the head with a Nerf bat. The plane doesn't need to have like seven different things or even, even two different things at this point done to it. It needs to have the 37 millimeter cannons overheat very quickly. Honestly, like four shots and you're overheated. Um, right now, you're, you, you're getting, I think, seven seven bursts holding it down boof 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 we'll count it in, in the game here but um it's just it's excessive um you can use your speed and your maneuverability and your altitude performance to easily get behind or easily get a plane on target and it's once it's on target it's toast because you're just not going to stop shooting you've got no reason to stop shooting um and that's that's not how that's not how this plane should be, in my opinion. The gun, the 37 millimeter cannons need to overheat. You still have the 50 millimeter, um, excuse me, 50 caliber machine guns, so you still be doing a little bit of damage. Let the 37s cool off, and then then you can start firing them again. But there's just no reason to have this amount of damage output on an airframe that kicks this much ass. Um, as far as the equipment is concerned, there's no reason to have anything but gas-operated action. The range, the, the, the ba quote-unquote balancing feature of these guns is that they're super short range. So putting long gun barrels on here conceivably could be a good thing. The only problem with that is you're only going to get, you know, 10% even once you maximize them out. 10% is only an extra 180 feet. Whoopity freaking do. Put gas-operated action on here, and the guns, they don't overheat. The rate of fire will just be increased by so much that nothing bad's going to happen. You're going to be so close when you're killing these other planes that you're not going to miss your shots, so you don't care about the accuracy impact that GOA is going to have. And you're just going to be putting out such a volume of fire that you're already doing, but GOA is just going to you know double down on that, right? I've gone ahead and put um, improved mixture control on here, just because I think it was in my, it was in waiting to be put on something. Um, but it's actually been very helpful. So you've got a decent amount of boost time. I still have 23 seconds, even with it being reduced. I suppose it's probably 25 base, um, and just having that extra acceleration and maximum speed 
Again, it's just just putting it above and beyond. And then being at tier six, you've only really got a couple options. There's no point to cockpit armor. Go all in on the site here. Again, you don't even need to build it for survivability. If you build it to kill the other planes quickly, that's your survivability. If you build it for survivability, I'm sure you could still do well. But I'd rather just kill the enemy quicker. I'll t but but I, I, I've, that's my play style. That's my skill set. Is if I kill the enemy um, before they kill me, I'm good to go. And I'll move along to the next thing to kill. I haven't built this for survivability. There's not a whole... Uh, I don't know anybody that has. There's not a whole lot of like opportunity to build for survivability. Because you don't have an airframe slot. So the most you can get is one engine um, equipment item and then your cockpit item. So you can't even like help the wings and tail anyway, which is really, you know, you, you if you're going to go survivability, you might as well do engine and the wings. You can't even do that. So um, I might put some sort of um, you know, survivability equipment on the plane once I've specialized it, but it doesn't need it. I probably honestly just go with more speed or more maneuverability, right? I'm almost certainly just going to put on this other item here. We'll see how it goes, but I'm either going to put lightweight power unit or upgraded engine. But again, engine armor protection. I mean, what's it going to? It's going to reduce your airspeed. What would he freaking do? You're already like reducing your airspeed is not going to negatively impact you because you're already so freaking fast. So putting armor engine engine armor protection could possibly be viable. It's not going to be my cup of tea though. I don't think anyway. I do suspect on the consumable, once I get this specialized, I'm almost certainly, yes, going to be putting the manual engine restart. And as I say that out loud, then that basically counteracts any reason to, to use engine armor protection. It just reinforces in my head that I don't want this once I specialize it because I'm just going to restart the engine anyway. I'll do upgraded engine or lightweight power unit based on my feelings over the next however many games. Apparently it's going to be like, you know, five more games and then I'll have this thing specialized because I've only flown it five times. Um, it's, just, it's just a ridiculous plane. All right, so that's it's a lot of a rant and I apologize. I know my videos don't typically start off with me talking about the plane. I think I used to do that when I first started making YouTube videos. Got some feedback on that and um, that's why I typically just go right into a battle. But I wanted to get this off my chest. Let's go ahead. Oh, oh, and the last thing. This, of course, is a premium plane, which means you can put any freaking pilot you want into it. I've put my XF-90 pilot in here, which isn't even probably the best option for this. But because it's a freaking premium plane, I've got Marksman 2 on the pilot already. Got Aerodynamics Expert. Aerodynamics Expert isn't overly helpful on the plane when it's um, stock like this. It'll be more impactful once you've got two equipment slots that are helping the engine. Um, Marksman 2 is definitely helping though, right? If I had a plane built specifically for this plane, it would definitely have Marksman 2 on it. Um, I would probably have something like Cruise Flight, honestly, to help with being able to get from sector to sector even quicker. Um, but there's also been talk about, what's, where is this? Um, no, 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 something here. I don't remember. Maybe not. <laughs> there was discussion about one of these other special pilot skills, and I don't remember which one, and none of them jumps out at me. But Marksman 2 would be something that uh, I would definitely want on the pilot. Uh, but again, it's, a, it's something you'd build towards, and Marksman 2 is going to help a lot of different planes, right? Aerodynamics expert, you can't go wrong with that, especially when it's specialized. Even something, and I know we're talking about a heavy fighter, but even something like aerobatics expert, just because the more, again, the base maneuverability is so good, the more we maneuver, I mean, we make it maneuverable, the better you're going to be against a lot of those multi rolls that you can already out hit, right? And you can definitely outspeed the multi rolls, so being able on par with their maneuverability is just going to be ridiculous. Um, I do like cruise flight for a plane like this that that goes fast and needs to go from sector to sector from time to time. And so that, that would be a recommendation. It's, that's also a good um, skill for really any heavy fighter, especially things like XF-90s and HG-3s and Javelins that you're going to be going really fast anyway and you want to go even faster from sector to sector. When you disengage from a fight, 
um, cruise flight helps your speed and lets you see everything that's coming at you or going away from you even better. All right, so enough of that, and I apologize. Um, I hopefully will put some sort of link in the description to just going to see the, the gameplay so you can skip my rant. <clears throat> but if you've uh, endured my rant against the XP-54, um, again, I love the plane. I, I, I think I've only talked to one person that doesn't like the plane. Um, and I don't necessarily want to to take away from what a lot of people have, you know, put a lot of time in to try to grind this plane, but I I can't say that this plane's well balanced. It just isn't. It's not, it's very easy mode. And I'm trying to take into account that not everybody's to to you know, above average like me. Um, but I still think that even in in just base pilot hands, this plane is incredibly strong. Incredibly, incredibly strong. And the more you get used to it, and the more you get better at the game, this plane's just going to get even, even better and even more overpowered than it already is. So let's go ahead and hop into some gameplay, and uh, let's see just how well we can do. You are entering the combat zone. Get ready for battle. All right, let's see what we can do in a tier seven battle. Uh, we got a B thirty two. Oh, it's knight. So shoot, knight's really good. So hopefully we don't have a, a quick Pilots, game. Get ready for action. Let's go. We're gonna go to the. Oh my goodness. All right. So under normal circumstances, normal circumstances. I know Knight's a really good bomber pilot. And I'm kind of sort of afraid that this battle's just gonna be done in two minutes. But say la vie. Um, let's just see what we can do. So hey, look, we're moving faster and going higher than everybody else. That's pretty fun. Um, so we're already in the sector. Let's go ahead and put these guns, which in my opinion are what make the plane overpowered. Let's put them to good use. And yep, yeah, these heavies are already in trouble, aren't they? So we're just gonna turn behind them like we're a freaking light fighter, basically. There we go. We're gonna outturn a freaking tornado. There you go. And that was too quick, now wasn't it? And that's the thing. So let me kill these freaking planes. Um, XP 75. XP 75 is tier 7. Pr very fast, very maneuverable. Tier 7 premium heavy plane. Look at us just kill that freaking GA like it's nothing. So this XP 75 is tier 7, right? It's balancing the mechanic. It's basically got the same airframe type as the plane I'm in. Very maneuverable, very high altitude. But its balancing type is it's just 50 cal machine guns. You don't have that balancing factor in this plane. You've got ridiculous freaking cannons, right? Trying to watch that um, fighter that's over there. Using all my boost, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, let's get these on target. I see I'm just holding down like way too freaking long. This is ridiculous. Alright, so what... Oh, here we go. Let's, let's actually count, right? Are we ready? Do I have a timer? Eighteen. I could get eighteen shots shots out before ah, before they overheated. Right? That's come on now. Come on. Like it should overheat right about now. And then it should be taking me like five seconds to cool off. But no, I don't need to. I let off for half a second, and I wasn't even halfway overheated. Like, <laughs> it's just dumb. Don't get me wrong, I love being in a friggin' plane that makes life easy, but I'd like a little, like, I gotta, I wanna think about it. I gotta frickin' work at it a little bit. This isn't working at it. This is what's next. This is like frickin'... 
It's like Bruce Lee and just like a bunch of cookie cutter ninjas coming at me. One at a time and I'm just like smack in the face, broke your elbow, dislocated your freaking shoulder, game over. It's not, it's not difficult. Again, the difficult part is, oh, I've already got a Meguiar's. The difficult part is avoiding getting the hit in the first place, right? I need to, if I can avoid taking hits, then it's gonna be game over, man. And nobody's paying attention to me. So yay to that. Oh, I say, I'm on fire. So now this is my weakness. Dang, so somebody finally paid attention to me. And that's how you take out an XP-54. But at what freaking cost? And I'm in the middle of a dogfight there, right? The game's so freaking over. The game is so over. It's not even... This isn't fun for me. Like, this isn't difficult. By the time they... They... Make me a focal point, it's already too late. Because I've already killed freaking ten people or whatever it is. Can I not crash into the ground? The biggest issue with this plane is I play way too lackadaisically because it's just easy freaking mode. Um, I've killed 13 targets. And how, how many minutes into this game are we? You know what I mean? Like three minutes? Um, at this point, like I'm just going to hang out in the center. Like That's where we are in this game. I'm now a fighter. I'm now a light fighter defending a sector because I don't want to overcap because I want to extend this freaking game out. And that's, it's, that's, that's not how the game, like I should be fighting to win the game, not fighting to get more personal points. Right? Am I right? Am I wrong? I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. Oh look, I can easily out turn a freaking 190. I'm a, purposefully, I'm purposefully making sure I'm shooting things that are outside the sector. We got the mining facility back so quickly. That's because night's so freaking good. And I was afraid that that's what we were going to run into, is having this kind of situation. Um, and yet, and yet, even with night freaking stomping sectors into oblivion, um, I'm still able to manufacture some freaking personal points because this that's just what this plane does. Dang it. Um, this isn't like proving to be a difficult battle and I just haven't had a lot of difficult battles. The thing of it is, is they, the enemy, if you're in this plane, the enemy cannot take you for granted. They've got to literally have a plan just to take out your XP-54. Um, let's head back to the center, I guess. We actually made it to Squall Line. We pulled this game out into a Squall Line situation. How nice is that? We cannot support you any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. In a Tier 7 situation, trying to manufacture freaking personal points. We have complete control of the oh, crap. We've got complete control, so never mind. Hoping to get a coasted up or something. Nope. Alright. Again. Freaking just... just. <sighs> Maybe it's just me. Am I wrong? Is it just me? I, I want to say I feel like this is easy mode. And maybe it's just my skill set matches up with this plane ridiculously well. But I'm not even trying. Like, I'm, I honestly am not. I'm just literally going from, from bad guy to bad guy. Let's head back. So, 18 kills, um, 15,000 personal points. Um, having to draw that out. Granted, now, if we had Knight on the enemy team then this would have been a different kind of battle, right? We would have actually had to been fighting a little bit more. But I tell you what, I've ran into quite a lot of human bombers. Um, 
this plane DGAF because the freaking cannons are just going to tear up a B-32 even um, quicker than a B-32 can tear you up. As long as you're not on like 10% health, okay? I just haven't had any struggles with this plane. Again, I know I, I haven't ran into the super freaking heavy-duty pro uh, fighter pilots in this game yet. Not at, uh, in these games, I don't think. I don't even know, to be honest. I'm not even really paying attention. Uh, I'm at this point. It's, it's, it's barely enjoyable for me to fly this plane, to be honest. It's just, I kind of zone out a little bit. Because it's very easy mode. Um, and don't get, and I, I hate saying that because I like the plane. The plane's freaking good. I like flying it typically. I'm just getting apathetic because of what the plane does as a stock plane. And, you know, being, being somebody who's trying to help, I, I'm trying to help the community, right? I feel like when I'm posting videos, when I'm doing my live streams, I'm there to interact with everybody, of course, but I'm also there to try to offer best practices and encouragement and, you know, do this, you know, this is what I do in this kind of situation. It might help you um, think of it from a different perspective. But, I mean, if you're running into this plane at Tier 6, like, do they even have a chance? The A6M5 killed me because I was turning. Right? If I was paying more attention, the, the A6M5 wouldn't have a chance. The 37 millimeter cannons on the XP-54 will just completely tear this plane up. Um, and then you're, you're gonna just boom and zoom. You gotta have much higher altitude, much better um, airspeed. There's just not really, if if I know, if I'm, if I'm worried about the game, if I'm like, oh, it's a close game and I've actually gotta pay attention to what I'm doing, the A6M5 doesn't have a chance. Um, unfortunately, my, my clan mate here in the JU-88P has even less of a chance. Ground attackers are toast in front of an XP-54. Bombers have a little bit of a chance um, just because if you're at a high altitude um, and you happen to knock out the engine on the XP-54, it can cause issues. But again, the, the, the firepower is just going to be so great so quickly that I haven't, I haven't had that issue yet, but I could see it happening. Um, the enemy team did not have a chance. In combination, because we had a B-32, but I can tell you of the six games I've played, and maybe it's seven, even if they've got a good bomber, even if they've got a good ground attacker, even if they've got a good insert plane here, the XP-54 can counter every single plane. Name a plane it can't counter. I, I gave enough of a pause. Um, there's just not a plane that this plane is really worried about. There really isn't. Um, yeah. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to see me out on the battlefield with this. I got to specialize it. Like, I went through 20 missions to earn it. It's a great plane. If you haven't earned it yet, freaking get it. I don't know if Wargame is going to nerf it. I, If they do, it's going to be some sneaky nerf. Um, they won't communicate to everybody. But I there's, there's no, um, per, per the forums, there's no, you know, from the responses from Wargaming staff, there's no plan to nerf this. So go get it. Go get it. It earns freaking credits. It kicks freaking ass. Um, you might as well have it. If other people are out there getting it, I mean, you got to fight fire with fire sometimes, right? Um, I'm not saying, you know, start taking steroids because all the other baseball players are taking steroids, but I mean, if they're juicing, here's your juice. Anyway, I, I, I like flying a plane. I just am annoyed with, with what it is. It's a weird, I'm in a weird position. I'm in a really weird position. If you've gotten to this point in the video, if you've gone through all my ranting and you're still listening, I'm in a weird position. Because I, I actually like the plane. I just don't like what it is. And I don't like that um, the potential for an entire 
range of tiers, tier five through seven battles, could be completely skewed by one single plane. It's just silly. Anyway, thank you for listening to my rant. Do you agree with me? Am I completely out of the field? I know there's there's one person that's reached out to me and said that they don't like the plane, that they think it's crap. Um, but that being said, there's literally hundreds of people that I've talked to that say this is either incredibly strong or it's overpowered. And that's the two camps. Either it's incredibly strong and overpowered, and that's it, really. I mean, I can't count one person saying it's not good as, as another camp. So there's the two camps, really. It's incredibly strong or it's overpowered. And I'm in the it's overpowered camp. It just... It's one weakness can be can be countered by by you know tactical WASD hacks. So get it while you can. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to me. I am done. I'm totally done. I promise I'm done. I'm gonna drink some coffee, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.